Good evening. Tonight is Tuesday, December 11, 2018, and this is the start of the Hanson Board of Selectmen meeting. This meeting is being televised by Hanson Community, Whitman Hanson Community Access. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, Hanson. Here are this week's announcements. Community Christmas, uh, Hanson Community Christmas will be accepting monetary donations. Donations can be made by mail to Hanson Community Christmas at P.O. Box 243, Hanson, M.A. Hanson PTO is presenting the first Freezen for a Reason Polar Plunge at Cranberry Cove on Sunday, God, January 27, 2019 at 10 a.m. Snow, a uh, snow or rain date will be on February 3rd, to register, go to eventbrite.com. Everyone registered before December 31st will receive a commemorative towel. Town offices will be closed at noon on Christmas Eve, Monday, December 24th, and reopen Wednesday, December 27th. Volunteers are needed on the following committees, the 200th anniversary, capital improvement, community preservation, Disabilities, Economic Development, Elder Affairs, Energy, Finance, Memorial Day Patriot Observance, Memorial Field Trustees, Recreation Committee, uh, Commission, School Repair, and Zoning Board Alternate. Applications for appointment and information on the committees are available at the town website, hanson-ma.gov. Upcoming meetings, Historical Commission will be meeting on Wednesday, December 12th at 6 p.m. Community Preservation on Wednesday, December 12th at 7 p.m. School Committee, Wednesday, December 12th at 7 p.m. for the budget meeting. Uh, selectman meeting um, will also be uh, also December 12th, 7 p.m. Actually, I didn't post for that, so oh. only two people can go to the budget meeting. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Um, then Selectman will also be meeting on this Thursday, December 13th when at 7 p.m. for Duxbury Fire Regional well, Dispatch I Center. Yeah, I can go. On uh, December 15th, recreation for uh, movie night, select meeting on December 18th, January 8th, January 29th, all at 7 p.m. here at Town Hall. Perfect. Thanks, Matt. While we're on announcements, um, you know, I, I think we were, yeah, we were all here. Um, I saw you, but you were far away, but I didn't talk to you. On Saturday night, I just want to see how proud I am of the, the town, the employees of the town, especially town hall, uh, the police department, the fire department, the highway department, they just did a great job on Saturday Excuse night. Excuse me, what about the town you know, hall, guys? Yeah, yeah, Who did no, it absolutely. up like that was amazing? Yeah, yeah. 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 It, 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 it was I think just, everybody stepped up, like yeah. literally. And there was just, there was people, I was here early, there was people here early, you know, and it was cold and just a great time. Steve and Miko too, um, you know, on the, on the committee, so. Just think it was well done and uh, good job, Mary, you and your team. You're welcome. Oh we enjoyed it. Yeah, that was just amazing. Even though I I must take umbrage at the poster, but you know. <laughs> the poster? <laughs> the poster? Oh, the movie poster. poster. Yeah, yeah. The poster. Thank you to the assessors for that. The poster that. was definitely good. Yeah. Yeah. That was funny. So first, under new business, um, we have town administrator evaluation forms. So in your packets, we all have, um, it's that time of year where we have to do an evaluation um, on the town administrator. So we all have these forms, so we'll take these forms. They have to be back by January 14, 2019. When, after you complete the form, it's very important that you give the forms to Mary and Mary only. So I can't look at Laura's evaluation of Mike and you know, vice versa. So um, once Mary has all of our evaluations reports, She's then going to compile all the information, and then she'll kind of compile it all into one. Uh, so we'll have a meeting probably, you know, two weeks after. We'll see when the meeting um, dates are after the 14th, and then in open session on that day of the meeting, um, we'll hand out that those compiled information that day for us to review and go over with Mike um, in an open meeting. So does anybody have any questions regarding that process? We're not going to get the um, forms from Mary until the meeting. 
that day of the meeting. That's correct. The compilation. You will get the results. The, the, the right, compilation. Right. But we won't yeah. get that Friday when the agenda. When no, the agenda we comes won't. Out. We can't. No. Okay. And if you read the email, first of all, I apologize to the board. I sent an email out. It was late today. I got it late last night. I was in Babson moving my daughter. By the time I reviewed it, it was after lunch. So that's why I sent it to you guys late. If you go back and review that email, you'll It'll have an understanding over. why. Okay. And there's some case law to back up you know, what, what we're doing. Okay. You know, so um, yeah. So if you could just make sure and get those back by the 14th. And if you, know, if you have any questions, then reach out to me individually. And um, Mary as well and All then right. uh, just to Go clarify because it is a, a little bit of a weird process like I understand why but it just feels kind of weird um, we can't with unless we if we start digging into details on what somebody put in for a comment then each of our individual um, evaluations are going to be part of the record will right. be distributed right. to everybody. Right, so the individual, basically. and that's yeah. one of the reasons why they have it set up so the individual yes. evaluations go to one person. And are compiled. You know. So right. we just see the compilation. Of course, we know what our comments are, but we don't yeah. know who so else. Yeah, so once we get that compiled data, you know, if there's something on there, you know, and somebody wants to speak about it, we can speak about it, we can elaborate it, you can say good, bad, yeah, you know, whatever, on that, that meeting. Just unfortunately, we can't have that information until the meeting, unfortunately. I think Matt. Yeah. Okay. Yes, what, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, seeing how uh, we're, I'm new to the board. Yes. How have we done it in the past? And yeah, how we have. Uh, it's been done. Mary can probably answer to that a little bit better. Um, you know, I haven't been involved in a lot of reviews myself. Uh -huh. um, I've had three town administrators since I've been here. Um, and did you do any? No. No. <laughs> okay. Sometimes they weren't done. <laughs> oh God. Um, it, as I've told a few of you, years ago, the evaluations would be done not just of the town administrator, but of the department heads. And each of the department heads would come to a selectman's meeting and the board would sit there and go over their evaluation right in open session. Um, then after that, the town administrator was doing the evaluations of the department heads, so then it became the town, the, um, selectman's job to just evaluate the town administrator and to be fair several times it just never got done and i think a lot of it was the, the turnover in the seat that they weren't here long enough to actually get it rolling um, a few years back we had all the selectmen would do a uh, do an evaluation and they provided it to the chairman of the board who would do what i'm going to be doing which was okay at the time, but subsequent to that, the statute has changed. And the court said any, any type of evaluation that's done by board members, if it's discussed in an open meeting, then their full evaluation becomes a public document. Uh, by, this way, by compiling them, you'll get what was said in one, one document. This is what the results were. Okay. So. That's and then I guess my other question would be, you know what I mean, like we work with Mike periodically, but how about the folks here in Town Hall and other departments? Are they going to be able to have any feedback as well during this evaluation? No, that's our job to evaluate him, and it's his job to evaluate. No, I get where Matt's Tom going with this, because yeah. where, where I work, we have yeah. a, um, we call it a 360, um, where there's something similar to what we get is given to our peers okay. and other people that we work with. And they, in essence, it's, they don't actually, it isn't like their feedback affects our rating, but it's something that the people doing our rating take into consideration because like we only have one vantage point and it's our day-to-day -day interaction with Mike. But like, I don't, you know, I don't know what the department heads and some of these questions are asking, like, cause I just took a very cursory look at here, but you know, like, um, is he developing them? Is he, you know, fostering training and skill development in all team members? Uh, you know, yada, yada. I mean, the list goes on, all kinds of skills that he's being judged on. And I, I think where you're going is I'm struggling with how, I mean, short of each one of us interviewing all of the department heads individually, which is extremely painful and awkward right. um, and time consuming for them. Um, I'm trying to figure out how do we get to that? How do, how do we get that feedback? Good question, Marion. 
I, short of just asking, you know, sampling some of the department heads and asking them, you, you could do that. Nothing stops you from doing that, but you should be evaluating them on what you have experienced based on your, your interactions with Mike. Sure. That doesn't preclude you from asking people. All right. Yeah. You know, yeah, I just, because, you know I mean, it's like yeah. we work with Mike, you know what I mean, and it's like we, as you said, we only see him once a week or twice a week, and but we don't have that day-to-day -day interaction. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, good. Any more questions? All right, thank you. Okay, next we have a vote to approve the exploration of a potential sewer district, which is item two on your iPads. Mike, it's it's item two, but I don't actually have a document in there. Oh, okay. Because uh, it was just really going to be a discussion, but it's yeah. No, I read the numbers. email those the other day. Mike, do you want to? Yeah. Do you um, want to speak on that on the Sora district? I know yeah. Laura was involved as well. Like, give us a brief. Yeah. Um, I mentioned to the board of selectmen at a previous meeting uh, that there had been a, an initial meeting on which in in which I sat um, with some of the. Um, members of the legislature our representatives and some some other local people uh, just to start the conversation about whether or not uh, it makes sense to explore a sewer district uh, specifically on Main Street in South Hanson um, I believe um, well selecting him at um, she ended up uh, running into a Bruce Hughes at an OCPC meeting uh, a couple of weeks or so ago uh, and raised uh, that particular issue with Bruce and uh, at that point, Bruce mentioned that they would be more than happy to give us a hand in going through the process, uh, doing some evaluations, doing some groundwork for us. So at that point in time, um, it technically what we'll need to do is apply for um, a technical services grant. Um, they do them all the time. But I think that we reached the point where uh, not only do I want the board's support in going forward with this writing and requesting this grant, which we will get, but I want the board to, <coughs> on a more official level, um, um, support, again, the exploration. You're not making any commitments uh, to going forward with the sewer district, but it, it is a rather massive undertaking, uh, and it's going to involve um, area communities. It's going to involve, as I mentioned, uh, our state rep, our state senator, uh, it, uh, potentially other, um, other players uh, within state government. So I, th I think it's reached the point where I, I really, I, I want to get the Board of Selectmen's blessing to move forward on this and spend, you know, time and effort on it. I, I think it's certainly uh, a worthwhile endeavor. Um, I think it's an extremely worthwhile endeavor uh, in, in moving forward our vision uh, for that particular stretch of road in South Hanson. So uh, I actually plan to meet with Bruce Hughes uh, on, on Thursday afternoon to have a conversation uh, with him and uh, one of the proponents of uh, the redevelopment efforts down in um, down in South Hanson. It's an informal conversation, but um, again, I want to get the ball rolling. It's almost a, a pre-meeting before I file the um, the request for the technical grant. So, again, not to, to beat a dead horse, I really think that this board of selectmen. Um, I don't think I know. Uh, you need to be um, on board at least with these initial looks and on board every step of the way as, you know, it, it goes any further. Uh, <coughs> Good so I talked to Mike Brady and Josh Cutler subsequent to your conversation, talked to Old Colony Planning Council and said, all right, guys, what can you all do collectively for us? We need to bring home the bacon to Hanson. And uh, th there's a lot of hurdles. Yeah. Um, you, we're not looking to um, bankrupt the town of Hanson to do this project, so it's all about state funding, grants, um, and, then, and because we've got the economic development um, designation uh, and because it's contiguous to some very important um, bodies of, of water, Taunton River Watershed Barrage and a number of others, um, and, you know, I have reason to believe that there may be some grant money, and then we can talk about how the rest of that is potentially going to be funded. Um, we'll, ha we'll end up having, you know, this is just a preliminary discussion to have with Brockton to feel out, are you open to it? What would you require from us? 
you know, is, is this, you know, does it sound like an overkill in terms of what they're asking for, you know, that type of thing. And then we'll, then I think we'll just um, dig into the uh, details. But I said to Mike that, um, you know, they're really not going to take us seriously unless they've got a vote of confidence mm -hmm. from the Board of Selectmen that we just want to have this preliminary, yes. um, you know, kind of conversation. Like, it, otherwise, it's just sort of Mike swinging in the breeze on his own without, you know, the backing of the board. And you, again, to, to her point, um, and it's re <clears throat> the reason I brought it up at a previous meeting, uh, I, I don't want to go any further with this conversation without, without the board's full knowledge that it's going forward, and again, with the, with the board's blessing. So, um, there, it, again, there's an awful lot of upsides to this. Uh, we have to make sure with OCPC and, and probably others help to make sure it is a benefit and not a detriment to the town, especially in terms of uh, expenses. Mm -hmm. But... Um, the fact that it is near some bodies of water, uh, it's, it's not that far from where we got our drinking water at this point. It, it actually could kill two, if not more, birds with one stone to <clears throat> improve um, economic development opportunities uh, in that location, but also further protect you know, our natural resources, our drinking our wells, water, yeah. our wells, and, and, and barrage think, and other things. Um, you know, we'll definitely have public forums. Well, you know, there'll be all kinds of vetting. So I just don't, you know, I've heard a couple people like, oh, why are you guys looking at that? You know, we've looked at it before. We have thought about it before as a town, but Brockton was never super open to um, letting connections. They kind of had a moratorium on it, but now they've revisited that. Uh, we don't know what those rules of engagement are, and I guess we'll find out once we have a conversation. And, and it's true, uh, there was an impediment for several years. Um, Brockton has had the capacity. They've had a great deal of capacity uh, for years, uh, but for whatever reasons, um, it wasn't the state. It was actually the federal level uh, wouldn't allow any hookups. So that has been lifted within the last six to nine to months to a year. And... Uh, it's so obviously they make money out of it, so they're certainly open to it. Um, my understanding is it would need to travel through an already existing system through uh, the town of um, Whitman. Yeah. So there would be carrying costs that so Whitman would make out, and obviously if everything lined up correctly for the town of Hanson, we would make out for those reasons that we just discussed. So I'd be looking for, again, just a vote uh, to allow um, us to move forward in, in exploration only. Um, uh, uh, uh. Second. Motions remain and seconded. Yeah, I'm fine with it. It just, once the things start getting heat, heated up, Mike, just to make sure involved the, I said this to you in the email. Conservation, highway. Highway, water, water departments, yep. and all yeah. the, these other departments. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, um, but I get it. You need, you need to have a starting point so you can um, start working with them. Yes. So. Does anybody else have any more questions? All those in favor? Okay, five all, Mary. Thanks, Mike. Okay, next is vote and approve the agreement with Lakeville on the dog shelter. You know, I read this letter on um, Friday. Are we past the deadline here? <laughs> it certainly looks like it. Mm. It's, you know, because it's, Mike, it says they, on December 3rd, they, they want us to, well, they wanted us to get back to them by November 26th. Yep. But they're going to be posting on their agenda to make a decision on the existing towns, basically, that are, in agreement with them on December 3rd. So no, today is the 11th. Did we miss the yeah, bus? No, they'll, they'll, they, they, they've been honoring it going forward. It's you know it's a town-to-town -town relationship. Um, you know, okay. When we first initiated this contract uh, uh, last year, um, it uh, I believe they were taking uh, they were they were supporting us prior to signing the contract. So it's okay. I, I don't think the, the first time I saw this was Friday. Friday. Yeah. I, I actually spoke to Tracy, uh, my counterpart mm -hmm. in Lakeville. She had called looking for it, and I said, um, you know, we're going to be meeting this this week. We talked last week. I said, we'll, be, okay. we'll be meeting this week, and she said, that's fine, because they're going to be meeting next Monday okay. is their all meeting. Right. So Perfect. I just want to make sure. Set. I'll send that to her first thing tomorrow morning. So I'm um, entertaining a motion Matt. to... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jim. Well, we, uh, oh, Matt, go ahead. Yeah, um, a motion that we engage in the contract. Um, second. Motion to be made and seconded. Matt could like to discuss it. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'll always have discussion once you put it in, yeah. just so you know. So. Um, so what's going to happen with the feline, uh, the cats? It says in the, ca in the contract, with the cats, cats do, are not accepted. I, I don't know what happens to cats. Michael? I do not know question. what happens with cats. 
<laughs> and and what good Mary Oz was doing is renewing the contract that we already right. have. That's, exactly. That's yes. And I think that. I think during the whole course of the year we used it once. So, okay. Yes. So yeah. what do we do? What, what do we thought. do with the cats now? Whatever we did with them last year. Yeah. Right. It's not so looking maybe, good for cats. <laughs> so maybe Mike send an email to the ACO and just say the board would just like you know, you know what, what you do with cats. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be that I can't honestly answer that question, but in all honesty, off the top of my head, I wouldn't be surprised if she took them home and took care of them. Really. Yes, I she was. Last week, she was doing that with dogs right nice. here and there. Yeah, oh, she, yeah, she does. She, went, well, she was leaving here to go get a deer by herself. Yeah, in between <laughs> things, before we had this sort of a setup, uh, she was taking the dogs home to her house. Right, so. We've struggled the past four years with ACOs. Yeah, yeah. Since there is, yeah, a, but there yeah. is a shelter over in Hanover called Last Resort, right okay. on, right at the end of State Street. But Matt, I can tell you, after meeting this woman in Mary's office, she is sweetest woman. So whatever she's doing with the cats, it's safe and secure. That much I can tell you. But where, what town, I can't tell you. Right, right. I just was, but, I just was curious. Yeah. When I was reading through. It's just like I think oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's it, I think it's more difficult and more stringent and regimented when it comes to dogs as opposed to felines. So yeah, um, I think that she's a, she's got a lot of more latitude in placing cats and. There are, I think it's easier to find places to take cats in. There's an awful lot yeah. of cat rescue in the area. Like you so said, probably a home like a... Or should take a them home. Home for cats, right? Yeah. But that's a good question. Um, any more questions? All those in favor? 5-0. But you're going to let us know, Mike. Yeah. yeah. Mike, you get back to yeah. us on the cats, please. Okay. We have a request for Megan Milsey. I uh, apologize. Boy Scout Pack 34 for a touch of truck fundraiser on Saturday, May 4th, 2019 at the McQuan School. So moved. Did he uh, second. I, I haven't seen him. Oh, second. second. Thank you, Mr. Bloss. Motion has been made and seconded. Any questions? Um, yeah, on the Good. discussion Good. part of it, I think this is a great idea. Um, I've been part of these uh, where I work for a truck, trucking company. Kids love it. My only um, concern is it's at um, McCoy. Yeah, we and we. I I actually went back and forth with Mike on this. Um, yes, and McQuan might not be there, uh, but but um, we won't be voting about McQuan until the May Town meeting, which will be right. I think the Monday after this event. Um, so the building's still going to be so there. So the building will still yes. be there. Okay. And, and we're not promising it for future touch of trucks. We can't promise anything because we don't know what's going to be there. So they're just looking so, to use the parking lot for the yeah, trucks. Just yeah, just for that one day. And yeah. we did um, we did reach out to the school department and to uh, Park and Fields uh, to make sure there was no conflicts and there aren't any, just okay. in case they were using the, the grounds for anything. Um, so. Mr. Dyer, do you have a question? Um, I just was... I thought for whatever reason it said something about maybe using the field, but if it's the parking lot, I'm fine with. I just right, didn't want right. them to use the fields, especially in May, with it being mud season. Yeah, yeah, that could be yeah. Right and you get baseball all the time of year. Okay, so the motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Five all. Okay, Josh is waiting patiently from the Hanson Business Network, St. Patrick's Day fundraiser, request waiver of Camp Kwani fee. Well, that looks like 5 and 5A on your iPads. Josh, welcome. How are you, sir? Thank you. You want to come up to the podium? Sure. And just, just give us a brief description of what you want to do with this fundraiser here. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so this will be the Hanson Business Network's third annual St. Patrick's Day fundraiser. In the past, we have held this fundraiser and we've changed the organization that we raise funds for each year. The first year, we raised about $2,500 for the Panther Education Trust. And then last year, we held it uh, for the food pantry, in which case we raised about $4,500. Uh, so we are still voting on the organization for this year. Uh, but with that, uh, typically how the event goes, we have it down at Camp Kiwani. We have a cash bar available, as well as Irish entertainment and Irish dinner that's catered, uh, making sure we remember the sauerkraut and mustard. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm sorry, vinegar and mustard. Yes. Extra mustard, Josh. <laughs> yes. Extra mustard. 
Uh, One and nationality with the sauerkraut. Just saying. <laughs> Everybody has their own taste. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but with that, the businesses in town donate a variety of gift baskets, a variety of items for a silent auction, as well as raffle items. Uh, we've had anything from a gardening basket all the way up to a full-size fire pit. Uh, so the businesses have been very, very generous in their donations. Uh, uh, and otherwise, uh, once we decide on the organization that we'll have benefit for, the event pretty much at this point runs itself. Uh, and I believe the Rec Commission did get back to me. Uh, they did hold their agenda and they have the approved rate for 175, uh, an additional $250 security deposit that will be returned after the event and a $40 bar permit fee. Uh, and tentative date or date will be the 16th. So March 16th of 2019. Uh, I'm open for any questions. What day of the week is March 16th? That is a Saturday. Saturday, which means St. Patty's Day is on a Sunday. Yep. Works out perfect. <laughs> I knew you were going with that. Yep. <laughs> any more questions? Yeah. You said you, have, you haven't chosen a, um, a benefit. Mm -hmm. do, do you guys plan on keeping it local here in the town? Of uh, it will be one of the things we already did. Oh, okay. it, it will be a nonprofit in the town. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's our mission. Yeah, our basis is the Hanson Business Network. When we're raising funds, where it's always going to be a Hanson-based organization, and it's always going to be a not-for-profit. And Josh, obviously, it, um, it's gone up to two years, from twenty-five to forty-five. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure you're hoping that it will go up again this year um, from the forty-five. Has there been any thought on the committee? To maybe split it in half and get two nonprofits um, involved. It's definitely something we can take under consideration. Uh, and yes, we're obviously hoping for performance and better, you know, a better track record each year. And uh, but perhaps that's something I can bring to. The, I think the group honestly, the reason that it went up last year it was for the food pantry. Like people just, yeah, just you know, it could be the same exact event. But when it's for the food pantry, people are extremely, right. extraordinarily generous. <coughs> and you'll obviously know then before the, the 16th where the money's going to head to. Yeah. Then. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, we'll, when I, we'll know after the first meeting of the year, right? Yeah. Cool. Good. So if there's no more questions, um, I'd like to entertain a motion for the Hanson Business Network St. Patty's Day fundraiser request waiver of Kemp Kalani fee. So moved. Motion's been made Second. and seconded by Mr. Bloss. All those in favor? Oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry, Mike. So I just want to point out, as I've been going to the recreation meetings, we've been, you know, they discussed this for us to discuss tonight, but one thing that we should really start considering as we go forward here uh, at the Board of Selectmen is just operations up at the camp. I know that the Rec Commission first approves it, but just to keep in mind that, um, we just need to keep in mind the operational costs, and every time we say we start waiving things, that it comes out. Sometimes it comes out of operations up at up up at the camp. I think yeah. operations are covered on this one. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah. They they yeah. made sure this year it was covered, yeah. but last year it came yes. out of the taxpayers. Yeah. You know, and then everybody's covered. asking why aren't they self sufficient, and it's like right. Yeah. Right. So just just as a heads up. Right. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor. I'm excusing myself because I'm on okay. the board, so, you know, so I just want to. Okay, 401. All right, Josh, thank you very much. Thanks, Josh. Okay, next we have the Hanson PTO, a request for a reduction in Camp Kalani fee for the polo plunge, January 22nd. No. <laughs> so well, uh, they're not using the the um the they're not using the lodge, lodge. and so I know. think they should change the whole thing to a basketball game. Oh I see. You're saying gym. no so they can't even have the event. Yeah. You don't want to have the event. A skate okay. party. I got you. I, <laughs> all right, I get your thought process now. Well um I well first of all I need a second. Anybody second that? Okay. Who, thank you. I, who moved it? Who moved it? I did. Oh um, you did. Okay. did. Um okay so I've got, I know, so we're all signed up, and um, I've got, I'm not going to be here. Um, I've got a, a personal thing with my dad who is sick that i got to handle. But, however, I talked to Melissa, 
and she emailed me today. So we're trying to figure out how I can still participate without me actually being here. So I'll read you a quick, uh, just a quick, I don't um, know this. why I'm done. <laughs> I, think, I think you might like this. This is going to be better than the public. Okay, um, Kenny, okay. I come up with a great spoof idea on how you can still take part in the event without actually being there. And I think I've come up with something pretty clever. Oh, yeah, wait till I see her. Um, <laughs> so here it is. I thought it'd be very funny to get a dunk tank with you sitting in it, of course, and we could have the other elder selectman. I don't know who true. elder who is elder. Not me. Okay. Try and dunk you. <laughs> we can even ask your wife. <laughs> <laughs> she wants a turn. <laughs> oh, we'll get a lot of money from Jim. Uh -huh. We can tape it. We can share it on social media, and then you can still pledge for it. So I got that today. So I'm seriously taking that under consideration because I'm not trying to back out of this great uh, fundraiser. Or you can just go on the 20th, the week before. Oh, yeah. 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 Or the 13th of January, <laughs> or the 6th of January. Listen, I'm not running it, so I'm, I'm going by the director. Whatever she says, she's going to lead me. Or Saturday morning She's going to lead 10. me to water. Uh, okay. So uh, I just want to throw that out there while we're talking about that. Um, does anybody else have any more questions? Um, they're looking for a fee waiver reduction of... I get the right one. From 120 to 60. 60 get yeah. is paid. 120 to 60 of a discounted rate. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody have any issues with that? I don't think anyone else is renting Cranberry Cove on no. January 27th. <laughs> no. Great point. All right. So all those in favor? 5-0. <laughs> had to throw that out there. Yeah. Okay. Old business. Nuts. A possible vote on McCorn School... Reuse and RFP. Um, Michael, would Mike, you like you, to? Kenny, I was just. Do you mind oh, if I just give a little update? Okay, because okay, it Kenny kind Barber. of flows into yep. the RFP. Absolutely. Um, so uh, we've been meeting. Uh, we put out a um, a survey um, out online um, to kind of guide us and give us an idea of where people are at in terms of how they would like to see that site used if it's torn down or partially reused. And, um, we overwhelmingly, it was pretty overwhelming, uh, consensus community center slash senior center. Uh, we got a lot of other, um, uh, types of feedback. Um, but I mentioned to Mary Ann and, uh, it, you know, to you too, Matt, um, that um, some of the feedback we got on this survey, and I might add, um, we got over 450 uh, responses, which is practically like <laughs> unheard of. For the, sometimes it's like That's me great. and my family that responds <laughs> to these surveys. So, um, so um, some of the feedback we got are things that I very strongly believe are being addressed by Plymouth um, County Hospital Reuse Committee in the way of walking trails, dog park, those types of things. And I think it just maybe that people aren't clear on that next step because you're in that limbo land right now trying to develop it. So I think one thing that I'd like to see us do is get both of those groups together and uh, talk about here's the feedback we got on McQuan and have you guys sort of check off Yep, we're, we're addressing these things up at Plymouth County Hospital, so take those off of your plate at McQuan. Really doesn't make any sense to have, you know, duplication on the two sites and have, you know, two sets of walking trails, two sets of, you know, that's just ridiculous. Uh, so um, I, I would like to try to do that in the new year if we're able to. Yep. Um, and then that way, because uh, I think there could be some synergies too, and maybe there's stuff you guys aren't going to do up there that you would like to that you could flip to the McQuan site and see if it's something feasible because in all instances we've been going out and getting community feedback and I would hate people to feel like they've given the feedback and we're not being responsive to it so um, you know on both on both uh, projects so um, as we started um, talking about that I got irritated um, that we had never heard back from a couple of the uh, firms that we had originally had conversations about um, in terms of commercial reuse of that property. And although the committee has said we don't want to become, we don't want to get in the position of becoming a landlord, we, we just don't want to do that. There's so many downsides to it, especially with that building. Um, 
we would be open to potentially having that de developed and leasing the land and getting money that way. Um, and so we reopened the dialogue um, and I nudged and, you know, followed up with some people that we had started conversations with and lo and behold, they said, oh, we actually would be interested in talking to you guys about it. Um, so they came to our Macon reuse uh, meeting last week um, and what we'd like them to look at more than just Maquan, uh, because the town has a lot of different little commercial pieces of property um, that we own, um, and would like them to talk to us about Main Street, would like them to talk about Maquan, what else could go up at the highway facility if we end up moving the highway guys to that new facility, could we do a solar field? In other words, look at some of these other pieces of property for additional and complementary revenue streams. Mm -hmm. um, but in order to decide if these are the guys we want to work with, we need to have a, an initial project um, and would like to issue an RFP and see who comes forward um, to work with us uh, to, be a, to be a commercial consultant. Um, so we've got some people we've been talking to, but they may not respond and we might have other people um, come forward. So and how about cost? Is it, would there be a cost to that? Um, Mike, did you want to address what the, it's, um, I mean, they're the, essentially real estate agents, so it's. It, okay. We had that discussion, um, and um, the way that we would, um, we would configure whatever agreements we came to uh, with, with this particular company or any other company, because as it says, we would need to put an RFP out, so it's not guaranteed it would be the people with whom right. we spoke. Uh, any agreements would be tailored so that um, any fees, any payments to this particular group would come out of whoever is proposing, uh, potentially proposing a winning use, a winning project. So, uh, no, we, we configure it so that the town was not uh, culpable in terms of uh, liable for making any payments. Um, the, uh, of course, the discussion uh, that we had, uh, it, it, it came forward that an extremely similar circumstance occurred in the town of Menden, mm -hmm. um, which the town with, with, with which I have some familiarity. So I, I've reached out to uh, the, uh, the town administrator there uh, to get a copy of the RFP that they put together. And, uh, and they did say, this company did say that they put in a solar farm actually on a piece of property on Route 16 that the town owned. Uh, but they did say that the way that I was configured is their fees, uh, their payments came from the, the people that put the project together or, or, or went forward with the project. So we would make sure that um, there would be no financial exposure to the town in whatever agreements we came to and with them. Just to be clear, we're else. not proposing a solar field no, at, at that no. property. That's just, no, um, it's, but, that's just but what I they think, ended up doing. You know, there. One of the things that we talked about is, is there a way for us to get somebody who's interested in potentially doing some senior housing project there where we can lease and the town will get money that way and potentially um you know even think of a way of potentially getting taxes off of that and in addition is there a way for us to make part of that rfp um, one of the requirements that they fund the building of the senior center and the community center well the other um, you know so we're gonna we're gonna we'd, we'd like to ask you know for a lot of these things we may not get all of them um but one of the things that was clear with the um you know feedback that we've gotten um anecdotally and in the and the um in the survey result is people want us to keep some playing fields there and then would like that community center slash senior center and we keep hearing over and over again that um you know the middle-aged school kids and that that type of age kid have got no way to go they're wreaking havoc um you know they're getting into trouble um and i think with the opioid epidemic and all the other um dangers that are out there we really can't um you know risk um, not having some place for them to go. There's going to be a host of issues to be covered there in terms of staffing and all that other stuff. Um, just so you know, the senior center, uh, the reason that's sort of coming up is we had taken uh, the senior center guys um, and the Council on Aging and then the library guys um, up to Maquan, uh, I don't know, about a month and a half, two months ago, Mike, somewhere a in there. Longer, uh, just to have them take a walk and see if, you know, if they were like in a state of shock or if they thought that, oh yeah, you know, we could see ourselves being in there. And um, 
the senior center folks were like, you know, well, if this could be reused or even if it can't be reused and if it's torn down, we would be totally open to it. And of course, town meeting funded the study for what their needs are. So we're gonna kind of have that happening in parallel. And um, the library is already well down the path of figuring out what they're gonna do <coughs> with that existing space because they had somebody bequeath them um, money for a study and, and you know, and they've got a, um, trustees and they've got some funds there. So I think they're down the path of really staying where they are and maybe using that uh, footprint um, to better meet their needs for the future. Um, so ideally, they'd get that senior center part, which is actually quite small, and then the little common meeting room, and then they could do whatever they want with all that, and maybe a different place for the seniors. Again, the ball's in play. None of this is finalized. It's subject to us having multiple public hearings, discussions, costs, and all that other stuff, but we have to start somewhere, and that summer is with an RFP for somebody to tell us, is anything even viable commercially on that spot? And if it isn't, you know, if we can't get anybody to come in and do anything um, and nobody wants to develop it because it's too costly, um, then we take a look. You know, this doesn't all have to be done overnight. It may really, we may take a book from McQuan, which is, okay, if it's, you know, a lot of um, hazardous materials and it's going to be too costly to rehab and nobody wants to do that, then perhaps we look at the clean footprint and then we itch along and do what we can when the town's got money and has got the will to do it. So I know that's a lot, but I just thought I'd kind of update everybody. So we need a vote. Does anybody else have any more questions? I have a lot of questions. Mr. Hickey, uh, Actually, not really. Laurie, you said you had 450 or 420. Did 420 any, online, and then Mike got a bunch of um, did hard Did any copy. of these um, suggestions uh, suggest selling the property? Like four people? Uh, in all honesty, the way that the question was, it was like, well, if we tear it down, what do you want us to do with it? And if we if we keep a part of it, what do you want us to do <coughs> with it? So it wasn't like just what do you want us to, you know, oh, okay. do with so it. it was, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, very few people have said to sell it, and I think the reason is because um, it's contiguous to uh, the, you know, library and the senior center and then the school, and it's such a critical like kind of little corner there that the thought of giving up control on that piece of property to somebody who could literally do you know essentially what they want even if we put deed restrictions in you know right. they could turn around and sell it um, you could end up with some pretty questionable um, things there I think people are just hesitant about it so now you have we to didn't go really, back and yeah. look Jim but I think that um, the RFP that I had put out that we got no takers on we get some interest but no responses I do believe that there was a, uh, and I, but I'll have to check, but I do believe there was a contingency in the, or, you know, the option of purchase. Yeah. But, but I'd, I'd okay. have to look. But yeah. And I mean, I like the idea of the RFP to see um, what we can do, but um, we had brought this up before that um, on May 4th with the touch a truck and then town meeting is what, May 6th. Mm -hmm. um, so any RFP, we would have to get back within 45 days of town meeting. The, the, the way this would work is the RFP that we're putting out, that we're asking to put out now, is an RFP to retain a brokerage firm. That brokerage firm would, you know, and I, we explained to them um, that whatever, whatever they could come up with needed to be come up with, you know, within a couple of months or so. Okay. Because the reason why, and I, I really have been f fairly upfront about the future of that building, uh, you know, my feelings are that it will need to be taken down, and I think it will need to be taken down regardless of whether we get any interest uh, in terms of redeveloping the building. My my hopes are is if there is some interest uh, from a firm that or, or a developer that didn't reach out to us through our own RFP process is that the costs of that teardown could be incorporated into whatever agreements we make. Now, one of the reasons that I didn't really see any issues with asking the board uh, to allow us to go put this RFP out, retain a brokerage firm, and let them do something over the course of the next couple of months is what I think you're getting at, mm -hmm. which is one way or the other, we're not going to have the money to take that building down until town meeting allow, you know, gives us that money, whether we've got it or whether we've got to borrow it. Uh, and just getting the money doesn't mean the building comes down the next day. 
um, that there needs to be a, a more elaborate um, hazmat sort of investigation. Uh, everything, because it's going to cost so much money, it definitely, and I, I, I said that I, I have done this exact thing before once uh, in a previous town, so I do know this quite well. Uh, we'll have to go through the, pro the whole RFP process, not only for the remediation of the, the hazmats, but for the demo itself. Mm -hmm. So this particular exercise, in no way, if, it, if it, nothing comes of it, in no way does it, does it really inhibit, inhibit the parallel track that we're going on, which is basically the tear down. So like, honestly, this, to, in a nutshell, this is an RFP to get somebody to shop this around yes. and see if they can get any interest. Yes. Because we just can't do that on our own. We already right. did an RFP, nobody responded. So now we want to see if we get somebody in the trade who might have some connections and know some builders that they could shop it around to, can they get something that we couldn't get? Right. And that's why I'm concerned with how long the RFP would take to get out there and how long you'd give it to... Well, this particular, what we're discussing right now, mm -hmm. As I mentioned there, and I'm sure that I will get a hold of it, there's an RFP that's pretty much already written that I'll just tailor uh, once I get it from Menda, and I'm sure they'll give it to me, uh, and that we can get that RFP out within the next you know, week, week and a half, whenever I get it, with a, a fairly short turnaround, I would imagine. I'd have to think about it a little bit. I'd, I'd have to see how they did it in Menden and what a reasonable amount of time was. But I would imagine that probably, and please don't hold me to this, but probably by the end of January, we should probably have responses. Right. And, um, you know, we'll, when we make that uh, award, uh, you know, we'll, within the award, within the agreement, uh, within the arrangement, we'll tell them you know, we've got till the end of March, beginning of April, a two-month window, do your best, come back to us, and, and if you come up with nothing, you know, we're moving forward in the direction I think we'd already decided upon. If they're able to come up with something, if there's, that'd be great, and, but again, at the end of the day, uh, you know, we'll be taking that building down. Perhaps it won't be on our, our dime, though, if they come up with some, someone. So the timing, I think, is will all work out. And, and you know, the McQuan Reuse Committee, and the, um, or McQuan Future Use, I guess is what we're calling it, um, and the um, surveys are very clear that that needs to be something that the town is going to benefit from, that we somehow get some kind of benefit to the town. So it's not all with a lens towards commercial. It's just, can we get commercial that's going to help us pay for what the town needs? And if we can, then great. If we can't, then we move forward with what, where we were going to go anyway. And, and obviously, if they were to come up with some sort of one, two, maybe more proposals, it wouldn't be something that would be decided in a vacuum. would come back before this board. I, I could right. see the potential for even a, a need for town meeting to vote on something. So it... Um, but um, I, I think that we're, we're all in agreement that um, w whether they come up with something or they don't, that building needs to come down. Uh, we can't carry it another fiscal year for cost reasons, for liability reasons, you know, attractive nuisance. So. And that was another question, Mike. I can't remember, and maybe you or somebody on the board can, um, to winterize. It's done. But was it twenty seven thousand? Twenty eight thousand for everything. Twenty eight. I think it was twenty eight thousand for the winterization, for the boarding up, uh, and for yes. um, and for the hazmat study. Yeah. So I wasn't too far off, but okay. Good. So we're looking for a motion for the RFP. So moved. Second. Motion is made and seconded. So Mike, do you need to say anything specific or no? Okay. Uh, you just voted to allow me to go forward. It's one of the Okay. Support. All those in favor? Five zero. Okay, thanks. Next, we have town administrator report. Mike, um, I am, um, and I don't necessarily need a vote on this, um, but I would like the board to be aware of it and just give me a general sense of support. We, um, as the board's aware, Josh Cutler had put some um, earmarks in the budget for us. Um, the one that I'm specifically speaking to right now is the thirty thousand dollars for economic development. Uh, reached out to uh, to the state. I uh, wrote a letter to free those funds up um, for this particular uh, bucket of money. The state, the department um, that that handles this, the money, this particular bucket of money, has requested from us a deliverable and a plan uh, on how we're going to spend that thirty thousand uh, dollars. I'd been under the impression we'd just get the thirty and be able to, 
you know, as we saw fit, do economic development things with it. That's not the case. So um, I looked around for something that was uh, appropriate, and this money does need to be spent before the end of this fiscal year. Um, I have contacted a, uh, a company that does uh, economic de development plans for municipalities. They're, as you can imagine, it's not a lot of companies that do that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> I found one that I thought was appropriate for the town of Hanson. Uh, has done similar sort of studies for, again, towns a little bigger, a little smaller uh, in the area, uh, but also on the south coast, <coughs> like around Fairhaven and places like that. So um, what, I, what I would like to do is um, take that uh, scope of work that this particular company has given to me uh, send that to the um, send that to the state as the deliverable. Have them approve it. They'll give us 50% of the money up front, and then 50% of the money to pay it off um, upon delivery of the final report. I think it uh, it really works in very well with what we're trying to get started. Not only in uh, primarily, but not only exclusively to uh, to South Hanson and and Main Street, but uh, this will be a, you know an overall look at the town of Hanson and what sort of opportunities exist. And uh, will sort of give us a guideline uh, as how to move forward. I think it's, I think it would be rather valuable. You know, it's it's state money. It's not coming out of the town coffers. And and again, we're we're somewhat limited uh, in terms of trying to come up with a deliverable uh, that really fits in with the the request or the requirements of the state. So uh, hopefully the town, uh, hopefully the board is okay with that. It's something I'd like to try to get done sooner than later. Because again, it's a it's a report that will take some time. Um, you know, I envision bringing these people in before the board at least once, if not twice. Uh, I think between between Laura and I, uh, we were looking to try to use this as a kickstart uh, to get yet another committee going, which is our economic development committee. Um, so I just think it all fits in very nicely, and again, at, at no real cost to the town of the town. I think so. the proposal was under the thirty thousand, yeah. wasn't it? Like twenty nine thousand yes. something. So we better just manage their over you know, their overages, their additional costs, um, so that we don't end up with anything out of pocket. Yes. But um, it, it's a bit like what OCPC has done for the Plymouth County Hospital. Remember that extremely dense last report that they did um, that went over like um, retail versus restaurants, like what percent we should have versus what we have on Main Street, um, you know, what would attract businesses, you know, those, it's all those types of like, uh, why are we where we are and what could we do to get out of where, where we're at and attract more businesses. Um, so I, I mean, I think it's worth it. And, you know, especially where the state is paying for it. So and again, I don't necessarily need a vote. If someone wanted to make a motion, that's fine. But if the board is, like the general sense for the board that you're supportive, I'll just take care of that in the next couple of days. It's something I should be able to move on rather quickly. Great, absolutely. Great, yeah. great. Um, the, um, the planning board met last night um, and uh, they supported what I brought to this board some time ago, uh, which is basically um, a redefinition of the town planner position which would uh, again uh, primarily this position would uh, would do town planning it would support the planning board and would support the zba uh, but as i think we've seen um, uh, subdivisions and things that the planning board need to deal with sometimes peak and they valley uh, what i had proposed initially was to create a new position that we would have called the um, community development director uh, in that particular position, again, the primary the primary responsibilities would be supporting planning and, and appeals. However, in those slower times, um, the, uh, the the responsibilities would shift to grant writing and to economic development, and uh, it would be of a great deal of help, especially in the economic development that. Um, that Laura, who has a full-time job, and of course we're always got a thousand things to do, uh, that that person could you know back us up in terms of doing some of this economic development stuff. Um, but uh, what had happened, and, and it's to Mary's credit, she had said to me, if we created this new position, we'd have to go to town meeting, and, and, and it'd be a, you know a much longer process. Um, just rolling these two couple of uh, these couple of extra responsibilities into the existing job description of a position we already have 
uh, made it a lot more sense and was a lot quicker to do. Um, we actually can go to a full-time person in this current fiscal year because if you recall, we did put some money at the special town meeting into the salary line. So what I would propose to do is um, I would create pretty much a full-time position for the planner right now. The person that we have in there is the interim. Uh, combine these responsibilities with the current person and I've spoken with her and she's comfortable with it however on a on a twin track we would also go through the process of putting it out there for um, for anyone uh, uh, who has the experience to to apply for and we'd go through that as well um, but um, what we would need to do and Mary and I will set it up for the next meeting is we will have you meet as the personnel board uh, to ask you to change the uh, the job description to include all of that so my not my concern but uh, as as we try to do we try to do things cooperatively uh, uh, inclusively as opposed to exclusively and we've I, I met with the planning board quite some time ago when we were talking about what we were going to do moving forward uh, again they met last night I met I spoke with the chairman of that board uh, today and he said that the, the planning board had supported this concept five zero to move forward so um, it's really just to let you know how we're going to move forward on this. The funding is there. The funding has been, at least to this point, we have it budgeted in for the coming fiscal year. Uh, the real action, and I guess in a sense, your real endorsement of what I'm talking about will be um, when I ask you, when we ask you to change the job description at the next meeting. So. And, and then are you, in the long view, are you going to go to town meeting and change this up? to a full-time position or it, it is a full-time position oh. as it stands right now okay yeah, all the right town planner position uh, there are uh, there are three positions that kind of dovetail into all this you've always had a full-time town planner you've always had a full-time conservation agent when you ran into the bad times you know back in 10 or, or yes. 11 uh, you combine them down and you made yet another position uh, so what we're really doing is uh, we're dusting off those positions that already exist so uh, again, so it, we don't have to go to town meeting to do anything. We're just going to now use the position that already exists. And is the current person interested? Yes. Because that, of course, would yes. be ideal if we could. Yes, yeah. she okay. is. Um, uh, on the 13th, which I guess is Thursday, I may have mentioned this before, the economic opportunity area will be uh, voted, and I would assume confirmed, in, uh, in Worcester before the board that does that. Um, if, if nothing comes up, I'm going to try to attend that. Um, I have a meeting tomorrow at 1 o'clock with our new Labor Council to start the, the transition over and have conversations. I envision um, he may wish to, uh, he and she may wish to talk to the board, probably individually at some point. I think his approach was, you know, very inclusive and wanted to reach out not only, I think, to board members but to department heads. But I'm going to start that conversation with, uh, with John Clifford and uh, Jamie uh, Kenny tomorrow. So, um, and I'll, you know, up, update you on, on the, uh, uh, the meeting next week on the 18th. Um, I regret to, 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 uh, uh, to mention that the um, recreation uh, director uh, gave me his resignation yesterday. His last day will be uh, the end of this month. Um, we're working on a transition. Uh, obviously, I guess if there's a time for something like this to happen, this is a, a optimal time since it's a slow time. Um, I think that um, you know there are going to be discussions going forward about how we move forward with that position, uh, how it fits in, uh, sort of a reevaluation of the entire administrative. Uh, um, um, set up up there and you know Matt will be involved uh, since the board had voted him to be the liaison to the rec commission so uh, we'll take a look do a kind of a post-mortem take a look to see you know do we move forward as things are now or are the things that we want to shift and change but um, just to let the board know that that transition is going to be taking place and uh, you'll probably be further discussions maybe jointly with the rec commission and the board of selectmen going forward um, so and we wish him well um, uh, on that topic, and I, I don't want to go too far into it, but um, I was really happy. I had a, a conversation with Selectman Blouse uh, within the last day or so, and um, I had brought before the board on a couple of different occasions. I think the overall desire that we see that the Recreation Commission transition into something that oversees recreation throughout the community as opposed to it's it seems to have just kind of focused over the last several years on the camp well Wes brought up to me and Mary confirmed uh, we look back at the, the votes um, over the course of the last I don't know, decade or so maybe even longer 
where there had been a <coughs> more of an addition <coughs> of responsibilities to the rec commission as opposed to the exclusion of townwide recreation uh, oversight uh, from this particular committee. So I had been talking about for quite some time about redefining what the recreation commission does to bring it in to, to handle everything within town. I don't think we need to do that. I think that we need now, and, and I, I welcome Wes to elaborate on this if he feels that he wants to. Um, <clears throat> I think now that we need to you know, brush off what was always there, and um, again, it's not something that's going to happen overnight, but start pushing in the direction where more of townwide recreation is encompassed under not only perhaps this uh, new director or new director position, but you know what the overall rec commission oversees. So, and it's again, it's it was actually a, a great thing to to have that sort of history brought forward, at least to me, so that we don't have to go through some sort of voter redefinition. It's really already there. It's just the the attention was drawn more to the camp. Uh, for a lot of different reasons, because of the the, the functions are going on. I call it mission drift. Yeah, mission. Right. Yeah, that's what you it, call it. Yes, <laughs> mission drift. So I mean, just say 1940s Cranberry Cove Management Committee was formed to take Marcus Uran's Cranberry Cove. 1972, the Recreation Commission was formed to do townwide recreation. Montpons at Hancock Field, the mill, the schools, Thomas Hall. So there was recreation all over the town. In 1979, we bought the camp and the Camp Kiwani Management Committee. And then you had three committees going on. And each was doing their own thing. But, I mean, there came a point, I just remember, when the Camp Kiwani Committee and the Cranberry Cove Committee were at each other's throats oh, over drainage. <laughs> and recreation was sort of withering down. And the executive secretary said, you know what? We're going to combine them all under recreation, make a nine-member board. Which, in the only change that has happened in the years since is that we turned it into a Took it down to a seven-member board a couple of years later at town meeting. But so recreation has never been about Camp Kiwani. But I do think, I mean, and it's not this new commission. No, no. It's yeah. just drifted, I would say, in the last sort of 10 years. Mm -hmm. More and more attention was on the camp, on the camp, getting the camp up to speed, yeah. getting the camp yeah. up to code, getting up the camp up to... Not really anybody's to, fault. Just and everything just sort of... Thomas Hall burnt down, you know? So we lost that. The schools really are... Full, right. all kinds of stuff going on. It was like, just seems it drifted. So that's all. I mean, I don't think the mission needs to change. We just need to remember it, it was a town wide thing. Yeah. I think that's good news. Yes, I, mean, I, I, in a way, because we've been talking about, like, oh, how do we like yes. bring that back around and expand it? But it turns out it was there all along. Yes. Well, that's, well, that's great news to bring back to the Recreation Committee because last week or two weeks ago when we did meet, they kind of mentioned, oh, well, we're focusing here at the camp because that's what we were told to do now, because they want, kind of do want to expand out to the town wide, but they're like, well, the, our job is just to maintain the camp and do some programming. So this is great news to be able to bring back and tell them to, all right, here we go, 2019, we're going to be town wide now, you know. So. And maybe, maybe it does end up that that group, if they're really into the camp, they're a subcommittee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's a broad, you know, because I mean, if they signed up for one thing you can't really like change the rules of engagement on them in the middle of <laughs> thing but we can say well we, we, we need something town wide i think that's pretty recognized um so if you still want to focus on the camp then maybe we'll have other people that focus on the other stuff you know so it just makes it a lot easier to get to yeah. where i think uh, the board wanted to to go so um thank you for that conversation uh, the only thing, the only other thing I want to mention um, is uh, an update on uh, JJ's. Um, the um, the date uh, for the cleanup uh, is the fifteenth, which is um, this Saturday, I believe. Um, from what we're hearing, uh, the piece of property is under agreement. Um, again, I don't disagree with this board in terms of we want to see something in writing. Uh, but all that being said, uh, it's, it's my strong opinion, as well as the building commissioner, as well as um, town council, who I spoke with, is uh, actually, she sent me a, a, a text updating me as we were having this meeting, um, that um, 
you know, it's not going to be cleaned up, and we're not entirely sure that um, the the new person who supposedly is buying this property, excuse me, <coughs> is going to clean it up. Uh, what the recommendation is, uh, the board could ha uh, could authorize me to have um, town council go in uh, on the following Monday um, to uh, to go to court. However, the recommendation is not to do that this evening, uh, not to authorize it this evening. Let's see where things, because she's trying to get a hold of the, the attorney uh, that is uh, apparently representing the potential buyer to see what their real intentions are. And if there really is a buyer, obviously that buyer is going to want to clean that up. But it's an update as of now. We're not going to lose too much time if I come back to the board on the 18th and I'll have Kate ready to go into court on the 19th if need be. Um, my interest or, or my goal in this or my suggestion is that we wait to the 18th because there again we're not going to miss much time and if we can get some sort of guarantees from this potential new buyer we can save the time and the money of sending town council in okay um, but uh, so you're saying all of the hearings and <coughs> orders and everything else that we've had with the current owner are going to be right out the window if that property is sold to somebody else we're going to have to start all over yes again. you would actually if that if that if that property does change hands, yes, everything goes out the window. And, and how do we it's, know it's not in the process of changing hands right now? We don't know. We have we have heard, and I don't want to say anecdotally, we have it on, through the building inspector, we have it on rather good, um, on ra we have it on rather good, uh, uh, yeah, that um, that we that it is going to be sold, but I can't confirm that. And again, we don't lose a, the, the date that you ruled that it should be cleaned up as the 15th, which is a Saturday. We've got a Sunday, which nothing is going to happen on. We've got, we were losing one day by waiting for on the 18th to see if in the, in the couple of days between now and then we can save some money without having to go after the current owner. Um, because at the uh, current owner is the only one we can rule against at the, at the moment. Can't rule against somebody who doesn't own it, but we'll have a better idea of what's going on, uh, on the 18th as opposed to right now, but I can guarantee you, without a shade of a doubt that that pile will not be cleaned up on the 15th, which is the date this board voted. Okay. But again, to your point, if that piece of property does indeed change hands, everything this board has ordered goes out the door because you can't enforce that against the new owner. Kate has said, if there are problems with the new owner, then we're gonna to have to go through the process again and get a ruling right. against the new We can't the control that. I think this board's voted enough on that. Come on the 18th, mm -hmm. you gotta just move forward. We've been talking about it enough. If it's not cleaned up on the 15th, Send her in court on Monday morning. If they if the property is conveyed to a new owner, then we deal with that. Actually, that's probably not a bad idea because the new owner obviously is going to clean it up. You know? One, one so. would think. But if the if the new owner is going to clean it up, again, the board will do and I'll do what the board wishes. But if there is a new owner and the new owner is going to clean it up, then you know we spend money and we we I send. Know, but the problem, Mike, the, all due respect, is they've been telling us the attorney yeah. sat here. I can tell you the exact date the attorney was here, October 30th, he sat here. We're to the end of December, saying it, it was, the property is going to be conveyed. But if we wait, if we wait a couple more days, if we wait No, that's from, fine, but, the 18th, that, well, but that's, I'm saying we don't need any more votes okay, on, the, all right. on the 18th. All right, well, let's do this. I want Kate in a court yeah. at 8.30 on the 18th. We don't want to talk okay, about well, it then anymore. Okay, well, then that's fine. Keep moving forward until somebody brings me a deed that's conveyed with the new owner, then we can stop. I until then, agree. keep the press on do them until they put the I want a vote. Yeah, okay. because one way or the other, one way or the other, just as I needed a vote to send Kate to court to enforce the fence, mm -hmm. whether I get the vote this evening or I get the vote on the 18th, I need to have that vote to have Kate go in and Yeah, but and you could get the that. vote this evening contingent upon if that doesn't happen mm -hmm. on the 15th, well, then, then this is what we want Kate to, we then, want her to then, then go Then that's the best, court press. that's the best compromise. We wanted to go in on the 17th, mm -hmm. right. Monday. The next yeah. business day. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm confused on the last two votes. What are we voting on? I thought we were clear on what Kate's going to do there. Yep. Well, well we again. Just keep voting and voting and voting and I nothing's need, being done. According to town council, I need a vote. Each time that they do not comply, okay. I move, with that, I move right that, that if that property is not cleaned up by the due date of the 15th, that Kate is authorized and empowered to go in and to um, pursue this matter in court. On the 17th. On the 17th, the next business day. Second. Yep. Okay. Yep. And I agree 100%. You know, if, like I said, you send us an email and say, hey, the property was conveyed, then we deal with that. 
But until then, I don't believe them one bit. It's just that simple. And if I'm not mistaken, we put a lien on the property for the fence cleanup and the well, debris yeah. cleanup. If Whatever we have to, we do, we do so it. So far, right. we yeah. have a lien on it if we right. don't spend right. any money. But, right. yeah. but it gets done Monday, or at least she goes into court, we get it done. So it's not costing us a dime. Well, the only she thing got the extension on the fence till the so, well, right. she well, got the extension on the fence till December thirty first. So it's possible that Kate could go in on Monday and she'll get an extension on the cleanup till say like the first or second week in February. That's right. what that's what she thinks. Yeah, mm -hmm. given fine, given what they did with the fence, the, 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 the fence up and not have to look at it. Yeah, yeah. I, I to. To be honest with you, I'd like to have some kind of leverage to force that cleanup. Yep, absolutely. Um, so if it's a if it's even like a lean because we put the fence up, and, great. And I'm just saying, Mike, this is something that one thing that this board is 100%. Yep. Right. You know what? We don't even have to discuss it farther because no, I think you don't need my whatever, vote. Do whatever it takes to get the damn fence up. Well, over I, there. I, that's I, what I said. Well, I, I, you know, it's my responsibility when I speak with town council to give town council advice. And options, and uh, again, uh, I'm, I'm certainly happy to do whatever the board wishes to do. But yeah. again, Express I'm, not, our opinions, I'm not doing my job unless I bring that information before the board right. for its consideration. Okay. So I don't want this board to think that that you know I, I want to hold anything up that I don't want to follow the will of the board. No, I know you're just asking yeah. our yes. direction right. and giving us and, the facts. And, and yeah. none of us want to spend the money, but we have to. We don't have a choice. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's, it's disgusting. It's gone on way too long. People are really fed up with it. We're fed up with it. It's like, let's yeah. get on with it already. Mr. Hickey. So, well, it's been moved and seconded, so I suggest we go right yep. to the vote. Yep. All those in favor? Boom. Got Five vote. Yep. Thank I'll let you. it go. Thank you. That's all I have. Is that it, Mike? Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, committee reports. 200th anniversary committee. Minutes? Oh, yeah. Minutes. Yeah. I'm trying to slide through because I probably shouldn't have checked it off until after. Before, right? <laughs> um, so, did everybody review the minutes? Yes. I'm looking for a, an approval for October 30th minutes, 2018. It was moved by Mr. Hickey. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Dyer. Any questions? No. Can I just say, just proofread? Just, I don't know how drafts become final, but just, I mean, just, I found five typos and stuff in there that. I wrote them, not Mary, so that's I know, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying <laughs> I anything. Just, sure. just proofread before, whatever, however you do the final on it, just go through it once. So are you saying that Mr. McHugh did not get a smiley face? I just said Mr. Oh Buckle. God. Mr. Buckle did not get appointed to. I forget what Mr. Buckle now was like. No, how about Buckley? Uh, so that is duly noted. Yeah, it is no high right. school. Um, all those in favor? Okay, 5 0. Uh, now, 200th anniversary committee. Uh, nothing uh, major to report. We're still uh, going through the logo. Uh, contest and um, we hope to have somebody something by January okay final Plymouth County Hospital reuse committee uh, we're meeting on Monday to further discuss uh, possible engineering plans and we're well we're meeting with the engineer and just going to go through the motions with that excellent McCorn school reuse committee been there done that already told you guys perfect and the Hanson school repair committee we haven't met in forever. Sorry, I uh, have to take that off. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. A, that's Mike and I are working on that. Yeah. Shame on him. Usually he crosses it off when he notices it there, so it's his <laughs> fault now, Mike. <laughs> um, building committee, we're still waiting for that property, which hopefully is going to be conveyed over the next couple of weeks here. So that is the end of our regular meeting. Was Mr. Hayes going to come? Did yeah. Did you know he's not so, going to Yeah, so we'll have to just table okay. that. I just check it. He probably forgot because he's doing a million things. Um, we are going to go into executive session to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining session or contract no negotiation with non-union personnel if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public body and the chair so declares the police lieutenant and the fire union. So I'm looking for a motion to go to executive session. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Roll call. Roll call. Aye. Aye. I'm in favor. Aye. Aye. We are now in executive session. Thank you, Carol.